I don't think there's anything bad inherently about you know being about wanting to be successful. I don't think there's anything bad about being envious of Smosh. It's just a matter of if you do it by cutting everybody else down in the process. You know that's that's where the problem. Is. I, I think there's you know John and Hank tend to be very very humble and almost paranoid of success. But there's an extent to which now we have we almost stigmatize that well Jenna Marbles. <laughs> She just, you know, she made it big, and well, whatever. You know, she's not one of us now, or, or you know, any of the. Look at how people. about Justin Bieber? He yeah. started on YouTube. <laughs> Look what happened now. Who likes him? <laughs> not YouTube. Ah, <laughs> the thing is, is that if you're burning bridges to get there, when everyone else catches up with you. What kind of friends and connections are you going to have? Exactly. Because you're not going to be, even though not everyone's going to get super famous, at least one other person is going to get super famous. And if you messed with them already, they're not going to help you out if you need it. They're it, not going to, yeah. If you burn bridges, you're not going to get anywhere because now there's nowhere to go. You're stuck where you are. I think networks are trying to be, trying to foster a bit of, like, full screen or, or groups that just try and, try and get people to, to collaborate and try and basically try, yeah. you know, now kiss. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shit. We're like fan girls with the channels. Oh my god! <laughs> See, we got there. But but do you guys think that's that's an appropriate thing for networks to be doing, or that's something that needs to be outside of the business aspect of YouTube? Like I think they make it. They definitely say it a lot to like convince people to sign with them. Like honestly, when you have thirty thousand people on your network, like do you really think they're gonna be pushing you for collabs until you hit that like million mark? Like they're not. Like they say they are, but really, like if your number. If you have like a low subscriber count, they don't care, you know. So in that respect, they're just, I think they're more just saying it than actually doing things. But with a smaller community, I think it's good they're getting people together, so people know each other and can grow together. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you get more viewers, then you, there are more ad traffic and that sort of thing. If the money pushes them in a positive direction, you know, if it's corrupting for good, is that necessarily a problem? Networks now are starting to sound like. Not like NBC and CBS. They're starting to sound like it. Like, okay, listen, we're we're not going to control. The difference is we're not going to control you. Where NBC is like, okay, you can only put out what we say. Mm -hmm. But they're going to say we're not going to control you. We're going to give you access to everything that someone who does want to control you will would give you. <laughs> but we're not going to trust us. We're definitely not going to. Toast different. Like like that. That's what they're saying now. And the problem is they're starting to grow very big, very fast, and in quantity as well. It happened in the 60s and the 70s between network television and public broadcast television. Mm -hmm. They could do what they wanted because the government was like, we're giving you money to do educational stuff. As long as it's educational, mm -hmm. you're fine. And the networks are like, we're giving you money to make anything that we tell you to make, and if you don't make that, then you're not making money. Like, that's the end of it. The biggest thing, in my opinion, to connect it back to Less Than Famous is, are you making YouTube videos to get famous? make money, or because you enjoy making content. I think the Less Than Famous community is full of people who enjoy making content. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a lie to say that we have not at any point thought like, oh, this would be great if I could make a living off of this and have a big community. But if you could only get into the Playlist Live VIP room, yeah. we wouldn't be sitting here right now. <laughs> I even said that to Dan Brown. I was, I was just like, hey, you could get us into the VIP parties. You have to find a, a middle ground. It is good to have that desire to make a job out of it, but you need to have the desire to do what you want to do, make these videos, which is why I stopped making videos because I kind of lost interest in making it. And I don't want to force videos because we all know how bad forcing videos goes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just the thing is that if you're just in it for the money and for the fame, you are going to burn out really fast because if you do a video you think is going to be viral or like popular and you only get like 100 views or less, you're going to get so mad you're not going to go back to that channel. Like, you know, like I think it's just attitude. I think you could feel it through the screen if someone like really is passionate about it or they just want to be like, I'm so cool, like look at me. I think you can feel it sometimes through the screen. And are there things that you feel that you know, either YouTube or networks um, or maybe even just, you know, larger um, YouTubers could be doing to help the smaller creators, the less than famous people. Go to the business mixer. Like, like we went, okay, so I was with Kevin at the business mixer and like, the thing is, is that there were like creators there, but like, it was very awkward. It was everyone who was just businessy, like everyone was kind of separated. 
But like there was a couple people who walked through that were the bigger. But like no well, Weezy one. Weezy hung out and chatted. With yeah, people. Weezy. I think Mike did. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Mitchell was there. Like mm-hmm. there was a couple people, but like the bigger guys, like they were nowhere to be found. And I understand they're doing their own thing and they're doing whatever. But like as a young, like not, I don't have a lot of subscribers. Like it would be cool, like talk to someone, and be like, hey, like do you have any advice? Or just talk to them as like a normal person. I think. During the business part, that would have been really great. Well, to, to answer the question, what could the bigger YouTubers do? Well, and, and maybe not just big YouTubers, but, but YouTube itself Anyone. or, or networks. Or... But, to, but to answer the specific question, what can bigger YouTubers do? Well, they could follow the Hank Green model. Hank Green watches YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and when he likes something, Please. he shares it on everything he has. Hank Green will share it on Hank's channel.